Welcome to Symbol Sounds of the Masters. This series will trace the symbol selections of the great drummers of the past to the pioneering drummers of today. Throughout this evolution, you will find that the music drove the sound, and it still does. Each interview will include a discussion of the music, sound, and process that went into making their choice come alive. Please enjoy this series as we honor the past, shape the present, and imagine the future. Welcome back, Zildjian friends, to another edition of Symbol Sounds of the Masters. Today we have a very special treat, a man that needs no introduction, the great Steve Gadd. Oh, How you doing, Steve? I'm good. How are you? Appreciate it, man. Thanks for, thanks for uh, joining us. We want to know about your symbols and what goes into uh, selecting some of these symbols. So tonight's gig is with Chick Corea. Right. And uh, what do you got? Well, I've got uh, a dark crash K. Uh, this is uh, an 18 inch. 18 inch. This okay. is a, a, a 20 inch orchestra ride. Okay. And another uh -huh. 18 inch uh, dark crash. Uh -huh. And these are like some mix and match. I got an A um, custom on top and like uh, one of these. Uh, this was an old rivet symbol I had. Oh, okay. I see the rivets in it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh -huh. I, I had a I had a set of of K's that I used for years, and and finally the the heavier one just you know got a, a, a the hole in the in the middle got too big to oh. to be able to center it. Uh -huh. So I've been just putting different things together, and uh, mm -hmm. they you know I try to get symbols that uh, I can use for uh, all occasions. So I travel with these two crashes, this orchestra ride, mm -hmm. a 20-inch Constantinople ride mm -hmm. that I, sometimes I'll, I'll put that over here okay. and I'll have two different rides and I can also use that as a crash. Mm -hmm. So, um, but, the, and then I just try to make whatever I've got work in different situations by either how loud I'm playing them or, and how I tune the drums and things okay. like that. The unique part of this that I see is the 20-inch uh, classic orchestral selection. Now, I know this symbol is designed specifically for orchestra and concert use. Mm -hmm. How did you get into selecting that symbol? Well, because I, I saw Elvin was playing that. Oh, okay. I saw Elvin playing that a long time ago, and it sounded good, so I decided to check it out. And that's been part of your setup since. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I find something that I like, and I play it until, you know, it, it, it just dies, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, and uh, I get comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then when I have to change it, it's, uh, you know, you just f f try to find something that's in the ballpark and then mm -hmm. you have to try and make it work musically with how, how you play it. You know, I would say that Steve Gadd's taste in cymbals is very unorthodox. Mm -hmm. It's just like he gets away from the, yeah, the ride, the crash, the whole thing, and he does his own thing. Putting one symbol on top of the mm -hmm. other, and he got that whole thing started. With made the, the piggybacks. Yeah. St that all came from Gad. He was playing Istanbul K hi-hats for years and years, mm -hmm. and the top hi-hat symbol cracked. And he had all kinds of symbols at home. So he took the that bottom was, symbol, was, uh, and he made it a top, and then he put an A custom hi-hat top as the bottom, which is a thin symbol. Right. But he still got that clarity of sound that he wanted because that, that bottom that he now made the top. Yeah. 
So, so I was, I was working on prototypes and I was trying to kind of, really, I was trying to reinvent the wheel. And, and, you know, my good friend here finally said, listen, what are you doing? You already have that symbol. It's a K-Constantinople bottom. Just go grab a K-Con bottom and let's go grab an A-Custom top hi-hat and let's just put it on some stands and see if we're getting what Steve already put together. So we put it together and it's like, Eureka. And we actually had Steve in the testing room. We had him right over here playing. Yeah. We had three hi-hat stands set up and he was matching the symbols for us. Okay. He says, I'm gonna put them together so you guys know what, what people want out of my sound. And he basically gave us a master class on matching hi-hat symbols for, for his sound. And he goes, don't you guys want to make the best? You want to make the best, right? <laughs> you could symbol. put a beautiful, clear symbol up for Gad, and it he, wasn't he, him. He That's wants what I mean by individual funky. taste. He wants what he wants. Yeah. I mean, we had to kind of lower our standards <laughs> to get what he wanted. So I know you were also an integral part in developing the K-Custom Session series with Paul, Francis, and, and Leon. What was it like working with them and developing this line of K-Custom Session symbols? Oh, oh, I mean, I love working with those guys. And uh, I mean, you know, in working with those guys, I was just trying to, to uh, reproduce some of the old symbols that I, I had played a long time ago. You know what I mean? It was mm -hmm. just a matter of like trying to, it, it, it's not like I had a different sound in my head. It's like I've always played Zildjian's, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And when one wears out, you have to try to find another one. And if you can get close to what you had, it's good. Mm -hmm. But if you can't, sometimes a whole other a whole other thing is is uh, opens up some other doors musically, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? 